Hey guys and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Now today we're going to do something a little different. It's going to be more of a story time Tuesday tip. Um, if you're new here, welcome. I know there's been a lot of you joining the channel lately. I'd like to introduce you to my Oscar, Captain Cranky Pants. He's a wild Oscar and I've had him for about 12 years. Now, uh, a couple weeks ago I made a video kind of talking about the fact that fish can't live forever and our pets can't live forever and how devastating it can be when we lose one that is a treasured pet. And I made that video because I was having, a captain got really sick and seemingly out of nowhere, they've had the same equipment and the same tank set up for years. I haven't added any new fish to their side of the fish room in over a year. And I really just was at a loss as to what to do. And if you've been around for a while as well, you know that I'm not a big fan of medicating. Um, I find even if you read the directions on um, different medications that are available on the market, if you go to their websites and read, they always recommend trying good water quality and a good quality diet before you resort to medication. Um, but I am in the fortunate position that with my network I have a friend who is a veterinarian who actually sees fish and I was able to consult with him about Captain Cranky Pants. Um, at first he just seemed a little lethargic but as the days went by he got worse and worse. Um, he was cupped up at the surface in a sea formation unable to right himself, unable to swim and unable to just act like a fish at all. He was still eating however. Um, now I spoke with my vet and he said there was a few things that we could do. I could bring him into the office um, and have an aspiration done which is when they stick a needle and then look at cells under a microscope to try and diagnose. But if any of you have ever worked with larger cichlids, you know that netting and transporting them can be so stressful that often it's just a really bad idea. Um, so he recommended that I do uh, medicated feed since Captain was still eating as well as a few other treatments that we're gonna talk about today. Now I honestly was very much on the fence um, about euthanizing Captain because this is a fish that I am exceptionally attached to. I, I mean, he's almost as old as my children. I've had him longer than any of our other pets. And he has a ton of character. Big cichlids have a ton of personality and you really get to know them as pets. I mean, that's why they're called wet pets. So with the help of my veterinarian, I decided to give it a shot treating Captain. Um, now one of the reasons I don't like to use antibiotics in particular is because even fish that are being collected out of the wild when they're tested by veterinarians are showing antibiotic resistance and this means that when we do have to medicate it becomes way more difficult to do so and a lot of this is caused by a good well-meaning people trying to use medications when not always when they're not always needed. Um, it's, that is not to say that there is not a time and place that we have to use medication, but there's a lot of times where if we can just bolster our fish's immunity through a really high quality diet, really good water changes and dilution, um, it can be avoided. Uh, in this case, I had tried all those methods with Captain and he was just getting worse. So the veterinarian uh, recommended a broad spectrum antibiotic in feed and he said either te oxytetracycline or bifuran. So I went to the website for bifuran, which I keep on hand here, and I looked up their dosage for medicated feed as well as consulting with my vet for the dosage. And I'll show you today how to make that feed. This was a food to be offered to Captain twice a day for 10 days. And if you've ever had an Oscar, you know that their pouting can be absolutely epic. And Captain is the king of pouting. So you're supposed to offer it twice a day for 10 days. He ate it maybe half that if I'm lucky. First of all, he prefers floating foods. Second of all, it tastes bad. And third of all, he wasn't feeling well. Um, so at the same time, I did a salt bath in his water, which was two, two teaspoons of salt dissolved and added gradually per gallon. Um, at one point, he, with his lack of flotation, uh, 
broke some of the skin on his side and he had some secondary infections starting. So the salt was being used to sort of increase his slime coat and prevent any opportunistic pathogens from, from causing further issue. Now, as I said, I really had very little hope um, for either fish. And again, there's no real way to know why this happened, how this happened, what happened, or even what exactly it is without um, taking Captain to the actual vet. Now, if you're dealing with smaller fish, things like a small schooling fish, and you have disease in your aquarium, you can send off a single fish to the vet for them to necropsy to get answers to save the rest of your fish. Obviously, in my situation, that was, that was not possible in this, this particular case. Um, so I'm going to show you real quick how to make the food, and then we'll take a look and see how Captain's doing. Now there are a few different methods to making medicated feed. The reason I like to use medicated feed as opposed to dosing the water column is it's a more direct, direct delivery method uh, to the insides of the fish. Now for external parasites or things like that, you generally would do a water bath treatment. Now one of the risks of making a medicated feed is that the, the method that I'm using, which is with a gelatin based diet, I'm using a rapashi meat pie, is that when you boil the water it can reduce the efficacy of the antibiotics. So what you do is you boil the water and let it start to slightly cool. But what you do is you measure out your feed, uh, it's four ounces of feed to one tablespoon of medication. I'm cutting that down a little bit just because I know Captain won't eat that much. In a, in a week, so or in the ten days, um, so I'm cutting it down to three ounces of feed, and two thirds of a tablespoon is two teaspoons of antibiotic. You take it, measure it out, level teaspoons, and then mix it really well. Um, it with this particular bifuran medication. It's really easy to see if it's mixed well because it has that bright yellow coloration and you want to try and get as even dosage as possible. Now in an ideal world, we could dose our fish by body mass. Um, and one of the things I had actually considered for Captain Cranky Pants was to use injectable meds. I was a veterinary technician for many years, so I have experience administering medications that way. But I wasn't able to get the medications quickly enough in order to treat Captain that way, so we went this way, and luckily it's worked out. So you can see I just mix it all together really, really well. The reason I choose Rapashi for this is because the Rapashi is extremely stinky and extremely palatable. The vast majority of medications taste really, really bad, so it's important to make them as palatable as possible. Now you can also do this with dry feed, things like pellets or flakes, where you soak them in either water or green alcohol and adhere the medications to them that way. But the problem is as soon as they hit the water, the medication dissolves. So I prefer this method. I have my water heating up. It's just about to boil. And to this mix, I'll start with about three ounces of water and I'll make sure I mix it really, really well. Now the nice thing about Rapashi as well is that um, you can increase or decrease the water as much as you like to make the food as thick or thin as you like. And it doesn't stick to these plastic containers. I just add a little bit more because I want it to be a little bit thinner. You just want to make sure you mix it all together really well, smooth it out. And I've done other videos on how to make this food that I can link to for you guys in the cards. And then you just smooth it out and it sets very, very quickly. And then once this is cool, I'll cut it into portions to feed to Captain. And you need to keep it either in the refrigerator or the freezer, and medicated food only lasts 10 days, so it needs to be discarded at that point. And it's really that easy, and I can tell you this stuff is extremely potent smelling. Um, but Captain will sometimes eat it, and it really has made a huge difference. Let's go take a look at how he's doing. So some of the changes I made to Captain's Aquarium during all of this is I removed the vast majority of the decor as well as the substrate in order to be able to wipe down the interior glass and make sure I was cleaning out as many things as I could. He's also alone now, which he will be forever. Um, 
you know, he never had an issue when he was alone. He was only with whiskey for a few years, but it's best to keep him alone. Uh, he's very, very, very dear to me, and I need to give him the best shot at the longest, happiest life possible. And as a full-size Oscar alone in a 75-gallon is really best for him right now. Um, I'm sure there'll be some people in the comments who say that he should be in a larger aquarium. However, the vast majority of us agree that a 75-gallon is completely suitable for a single Oscar. In the future, I would love to keep a group of Oscars in a significantly bigger tank in order to experience that. But for my single pet, this is, in my opinion, completely suitable. So let's take a look at Captain and we'll see how he's doing. So as you can see, Captain is acting pretty much like his normal self. He's still not 100%. And the veterinarian has recommended I do a second course of antibiotics just to be on the safe side. Initially, we thought he might have a swim bladder tumor, but since he responded to these medications, it's likely he had some sort of opportunistic pathogen. I'm just really, really relieved that he is eating, he is swimming, he's coloring up, and he's acting like his Oscar self. He was even doing the cranky pants dance the other day. Um, I am going to continue the salt medication. He's not quite out of the woods but he's absolutely swimming well. His body mass is fantastic and his fin health is good. So I'm just really, really thankful that it wasn't his time yet. And I hope this means that I have several more years with him. Though with a fish this old, you just never know. Um, I just wanted to share with you guys sort of my journey with him uh, about what I had to do. And I apologize for not filming him when he was sick, but it was very, very hard for me to look at and I didn't want to have to edit that footage. Uh, but anyway, you can see him doing well here and I hope that showing you guys sort of how to make the medicated feed and talking about this journey that I went through with Captain will maybe help some of you. Um, He's kind of showing off and doing a half pout right now. He's mad because he got, again, another daily water change. Um, but it's paying off and he, he really looks good. And I just, I just hope that um, some of you can benefit from this experience I had with Captain. As always, let me know your suggestions or thoughts in the comments down below.